Now I'm going to talk about the industry supply curve and I'm going to talk about the case where we have lots of curves with identical cost structures. And notice that in perfect competition basically everything comes down to price and cost because there isn't much else that firms can compete on. All of their products are the same and they're going to go ahead and only be able to compete on price then. So let's suppose again we have a marginal cost curve, we have our average variable cost curve, and we have our average total cost curve. Now what's going to happen here is remember that the supply curve for each firm in the short run is going to be everything along the marginal cost curve that's above the minimum of the average variable cost curve. In the longer run, we're going to go ahead and see that it's everything above the minimum of the average total cost curve because firms need to break even. So, if price greater than minimum of the average variable cost curve, what's going to happen here is each of our firms is going to produce, in this case, seven and a half units. So if the price is here at 450, then each of the firms is going to produce seven and a half units. And industry supply is going to be the number of firms times the amount each firm is willing to supply. So if we had a hundred firms of this size and the price was six bucks, then each of our hundred firms would be willing to supply I think nine units here and industry supply would be 100 firms times nine units each or 900 units or at least that's what it would be in the short run in the long run a price of six dollars doesn't allow these firms to break even so, what's going to happen here is that price less than the minimum of ATC, the in minimum of average total cost, is going to cause firms to exit. And firms are going to exit the industry. On the other hand, if we had a price above the minimum of the average total cost curve, firms would be making economic profit and entering the industry. So let's go ahead and see what we have here for the minimum of average total cost six we're gonna call that seven dollars and fifty cents there so if price is less than 750 firms are gonna exit the industry so what does that mean in terms of the overall industry supply curve there's actually going to be both a long run and a short run supply curve. So we saw that our shutdown price in the previous slide was going to be 450 and we saw that our break even price was 750. So in the short run, as long as the price is above 450, we're going to be able to have firms supply and the supply curve is going to be the number of firms times the amount each firm was willing to supply. So again going back to say a hundred firms, our hundred firms produced, were willing to produce 900 units 
And then if we had gone back and looked at that graph at the same time, if, say, price rose to 750, our 100 firms were willing to produce 10, maybe let's call it 10.8 units each. So at a price of 750, 5, 6, 7, 50, we're going to have 100 firms producing out here. And so basically we would end up having the short-run industry supply curve be something like this, where it's 100 times what each individual firm is willing to supply. So that's our 750 break-even price. In the long run, if price is above 750, firms are going to enter the industry and the short-run supply curve is going to shift right. So this would be the short-run industry supply with 100 firms. If prices are high, firms are going to enter here and the supply curve is going to shift right. So this might be the short-run short run industry supply with, say, 120 firms. So what's our prediction of what will eventually happen? Well, let's suppose the demand curve for this industry looks something like this. Well, as long as our short-run equilibrium keeps prices at the intersection of supply and demand, above that break-even price, the supply curve is going to keep on shifting right because firms are doing better than breaking even. So we would predict that eventually we would get to a supply curve like this, and this is going to be our short-run supply curve with, say, 125 firms. So just a few more than this supply curve right here. So the short-run industry de supply curve depends on the marginal cost curves, but there's also what we call a long-run industry supply. Because notice, if demand grows, eventually, so we have some new demand curve out here, eventually the short-run supply curve would shift out to here as yet more firms into the industry. So, likewise, if we had a fall in demand, you know, demand really craters here, firms are going to exit the industry until we get to short-run industry supply with, say, 40 firms. So, what we're going to say here is that there's a long-run industry supply curve And that long-run industry supply cur curve is perfectly elastic or perfectly horizontal here at the minimum of the average total cost curve, or which is to say at the break-even price. Because if prices are above the break-even amount, firms are going to enter the industry, if, and that's going to go ahead and drive down prices, and then we get to a new equilibrium. If prices are below, say for instance right here, then if prices are at this intersection of demand 3 and our original industry supply curve, then prices are low, firms are going to exit the industry, a smaller number of firms causes the supply curve to shift left here, and eventually we get to this intersection right here. So again, if we do really do have an infinite number of potentially identical firms entering the market here, we're going to have this long-run industry supply curve that's perfectly elastic. That's probably not likely to happen, but it's a useful thought experiment for some situations.